Alright guys, what's up? Welcome to another local band, Smokeout. I'm your host, is the most BG, and I'm hanging out with the fellas in Godless Throne, a new band we kind of discovered uh, a couple months ago that is extremely fucking brutal and fantastic. They're out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and you can find them at, at Godless Throne on Facebook. Fellas, how are we doing today? Amazing. Salutations. Yo, we're doing good. We're doing good. We're trying to stay cool, man. It's hot. Hell yeah. If you guys could introduce yourself, let everybody know what you do in the band real fast. Uh, I guess DeLorean. Jr. Just... All right, I'm uh, DeLorean Nero. I play guitar. And I'm Tom. I also play guitar. Tom, you can only see like a little bit of you, Tom. Oh, there we go. There's Tom. <laughs> cool. Uh, like I said, I got a bunch of questions for you. Hopefully, uh, we get some cool answers. Uh, when did we the band actually? What did you say? I said we have questions for you too. Oh, okay. I'm just joking. I'll, I'll answer him. I'll answer him. Uh, when did you guys actually form uh, Godless Throne? When, when, uh, what year? How long you been around for? So that was me and Jay. We had known each other for a while. I had been in other local bands, and um, when those ended, me and Jay kind of hooked up, kind of had a vision of a, of a direction different from what I had previously done, but it was a, a good, solid vision, and a uh, Kind of started there. This was back in what? Well, well, Tom and I have known each other since for about 15 years, actually. Yeah. And uh, I I met Tom because he had his death metal band and they needed a vocalist. And so I tried out and uh, it worked out for like a couple months. But at the end of the day, it, it, I wasn't the right fit. And But we stayed in contact. And so... Um, we start. We try to do something again in like 2012. That didn't work out, and then we came back around, circled back around 2015, 16, is when we started Godless Throne. Yes. How'd you meet? How'd you meet Dilo? Dio, I mean Dio. We, you know, he he was in the local scene too. He's been in local bands. Uh, we've played shows together. He was always cool to hang out with, and. Um, when the time came to record this last album, we brought Dio on board, you know, he's just a phenomenal guitarist, you know, really added the next level of, uh, of guitar work that we needed. Hell, he just kind of slid right in, fit right in there. I love slid it. Slid right in, that's what he did. Hey, I'm new <laughs> here. Oh, one second. Hey. Hey. Is that how it went down? This should all be muted. That's exactly how it went down. Uh, and we played shows with each other from about uh, 2013 to about uh, 20. 15, 2016, yeah, there's plenty of shows coming out to Las Vegas around that time. Plenty of bands, plenty of metal bands that usually never come out here, too. So we were uh, really fortunate. Can you guys name every band you've ever been in? Yeah, Godless Throne. Well, no. <laughs> well, weren't you, didn't you just say you guys were in a death metal band together that didn't work out? Uh, yeah, that was called Spun in Darkness. Spun in Darkness, yeah, out of Vegas. Uh, Jay, yeah, he when that was starting, Jay was part of that briefly. It was like a month or two, so it, it counts. It, it counts. Count. <laughs> yeah, and then that band, you know, we did a few things, mostly all local, put out a few independent stuff, and then when that ended, we hooked up again and kind of pushed this vision forward. You know, I love it. And Dia, what was your band's? All right, so uh, out of all like the you know the high school bands, you know like the nameless bands. Uh, Besides those, uh, Casket Raider uh, was pretty much like my first actual local band I started playing with around Vegas. Um, and The Sentient, which was like a death metal band that I was a part of before I joined Godless Throne. Cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is everyone in the band 420 friendly? You do not uh, have to answer I'm definitely for some reason you don't friendly. want to answer. I'd say Jay is not. I'm, I'm, I'm straight edge, but I, I believe in freedom. Cool. I can dig that. I can dig that. Yeah, right. What about Serena? She probably blows the most trees in the in the group, right? <laughs> that I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, we actually don't know. Yeah, we... That's cool. There's some uh, mystery to Serena. Now, I, did, I did notice uh, in the video, Serena has to wear headphones 
Does there ever an issue like when I in one of my old bands, my drummer had to wear headphones and, and he had to tape them to his head because he would rock out so I'd like uh, fly off. Does, is there ever any an issue where like uh I'm assuming for like background music or sampling is why mm -hmm. she has them on. Is there ever yeah. been like an I issue? She was here to answer that for herself. Yeah, she um, says she's trying to get on. I don't know where she's at, but yeah, you know, we played at the click, you know, we run backing tracks. Um, for like the keys and stuff, so we got to be right on. Plus, this music is just, you know, we just got to be super tight. So she uses it for that. I haven't seen her have an issue with them falling off or anything. So excellent. Hearing everything, I don't know how she does it, differentiating, you know, where we're at. But yeah, so she does play with the headphones to keep us all in like really good time. Cool. Very cool. Uh, let's go with fan question number one, which is kind of a weird fan question, but. What is your favorite hip hop song? I swear to God, that's what somebody told me to ask you guys. And I was like, you know, they're like fucking extreme death metal, right? And they were like, it's cool, just ask them. Well, it's funny. It's funny that that question uh, has popped up because I honestly, I love reggaeton. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can name up a lot of songs with reggaeton. Cool. So you're the dancer. You're the dancer in the crew. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, rap song. Yeah, um, I, I certainly don't. The only song I can think I of. Remember that song? I got five on it. Oh yeah, Looney's. <laughs> that was a good song. <laughs> uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony stuff by them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just saw like that Friends episode where they played a uh, Baby's Got Back. So, so that song's in my head at the moment. That's the only thing I can think he's got that. That's a, a class. I'm not a big rap fan. I don't think he's got yeah. that. I'm probably the most eclectic person when it comes to music in the band, so. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay, so you're you're stuck on an island, and before you... I know some of these questions are fucking weird, but just roll with it. Uh, you're stuck on an island, and you can only take one album to that island to listen to for the rest of your life. What album is it? It's a good question. Oh, that's a good question. It cannot be a burn CD or some some loophole. It cannot be that. It has to be how it came out. Go ahead, Dio. You got to have that planned out already. Uh, I don't. I'm such a music lover. Um... For me, I'll, I'll I'll throw in one just to get started. I, I'm I'm torn between. One of the one of the early Zeppelin albums, maybe Hybrid Theory from Linkin Park, uh, something from the Beatles. I love classic rock. Oh, I, I don't know if, this, if there's an answer on my end with this one. I know. It's a tough one. Give it some thought. We'll come back. Give it some thought. <laughs> okay, yeah. We definitely have to come back to that one. What was the hardest song to write and record on the album? Which one in particular? Oh, I think I think Nero. Nero. Yeah, that's just, our finale. Just because that that well, there's a few reasons why, but I think yeah, it's the last song on the record. Uh, Nero Eschaton is what it's called, and I think that was the hardest one to write, just because that was the last song that we wrote, and I think. Um, it, there had been so much time that had passed that I think the creative juices kind of were hindered. But for me, for me. But so. I think it came out the best in the end. It just took a minute to finish it. We kind of had it like almost done for the longest and then we just kind of completed all the other songs and we had to get back to that one and we're like, okay, what do we want to do with this one? Did you know and, all along that that was going to be the last song on the scene? Yes, yes we did. Okay, okay. So we had it, like, this is the last song on the album. We had it in, like, three parts. It was going to be this, like, 15-minute song. And then we were just like, yeah, this this is too long. So we kind of just have, like, three distinct parts, and we put them together. When you do hear the album one day, I think you'll, uh, you'll see how it all kind of came together. But, yeah, that was the song we had the most, like, back and forth with what we were going to do. And then we kind of put it on hold, and then we came back to it at the end. But I think it ended up being one of the best ones. You know, yeah, we we don't play it much like in rehearsal, and I, you know, mm -hmm. just because of that reason, it kind of you know it kind of came together like at the end there. 
whereas the other ones we played so many times. But uh, yeah, it's called Miro. It's pretty good, which is actually you know Dio's name, <laughs> so it's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, everything was very uh, premeditated, and um, the studio process went really well, uh, very smooth, for the most part. Uh, guitars went really smooth, bass, uh, who'd you, drums. Who'd you guys record with? Uh, I don't know if we're allowed to, to talk about who recorded the drums. Oh, okay. Okay, well, it's uh, Sean from Carnifex. Uh, oh, He's the one that's shit. actually on the album. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he's, he's the one that actually... He didn't play live. He didn't record them live, but he programmed them. You can't tell. You can't tell. He did a good job. Yeah. So oh, we had yeah. like wrote it and we sent it to him to like really drill down and make it real and uh, you know. So yeah, it came out really good. And Serena really hit it hard when she, uh, you know, when she plays with us. So yeah, it really worked out nice. Did he? Did yeah, he... when we got Serena in there, like she basically learned the album just by listening to it. You know, um, she didn't even really have much of a practice space at the time, you know, to play drums. And then, like, she came to rehearsal one day, and you know, it's like she already picked up on most of the stuff. So it was, it's pretty incredible. That's impressive. Uh, who, did is the dude from Carnifex help write a lot of the, like the symphonic stuff? Because when I watch the videos, I, I okay, I'm seeing no. When I watch the symphonic or the video. I see all the you could hear all the different instruments and stuff, which I imagine is the backing track. But you guys were in control of of creating all that. Yeah, so we had a keyboardist um, who was on this record. Who I, I was mainly writing with her, so she would create uh, parts, and I would essentially direct her and advise her on what to do. Some stuff I would omit. Some stuff was great. Other stuff, I would say, you know, for the next progression, let's take a note up or let's take a note down. So it, we did have a keyboardist, but I had a very heavy hand in the direction of how the keys sound. And in fact, um, I flew to her a couple times to sit down and compose with her, and she flew to me once to sit down and really dial that stuff in. Hell yeah, the in-person in person writing like that just... You just can't achieve that same connection sometimes over over the phone. Oh, well, no, so. and I would I would try I would, I would you know respond to her with what I wanted her to do, but sometimes it was very very difficult, and a lot of times I couldn't because I'm not a musician. I just have a really good ear, and so I would have to be there in person and really kind of guide her as far as maybe the notes that I want or uh, even the instruments that I that I want or how I want wanted it layered. Gotcha. But she did she she did. Um, she did a great job. She did the writing. I just was, I did a, I had a heavy hand in the direction of the composition. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Jay, have you ever, have you ever had, like, first of all, your screams are insane. And I listen to all sure. kinds of new bands every single day. And, and you you as a vocalist, like, really stood out to me. I'm very impressed. Uh, have you ever had serious vocal training before? No, zero. I mean, back in the day, because Cradle of Filth is my favorite band, and so I would always just replicate Danny's, you know, screams. And so um, my only vocal training would be replicating Danny. Just drive around the car at, at maximum volume? Yeah, that, the shower, you know, whatever. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Have you guys always lived in Vegas? Or is anyone not from Nevada? So uh, I've been here most of my life, so I mean, since about eight years old, so pretty much from here. <laughs> I, I moved and I've come back. So where'd you move to? Oh, I've lived everywhere. Cool traveler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm from New York Adventure. City originally, but I've been out here for quite a bit now. So okay, I'm New York City, East Coast. What's everyone in the band's bad habits? Like me, I'm I'm a nail biter, dude. I I bite my nails so much. I don't even know I'm doing it half the time. Uh, uh, who's next? <laughs> my liability, I guess I would define it more than a bad habit, is just I get too many tattoos too often. That's not a bad habit whatsoever, my friend. Well, it's a, it's that's a, a good habit. 
Good it's habit. Expense, you know? <laughs> you get them and you get them removed, right? I get them removed and get them cut right. out. He'll get them cut out, removed. Oh, yeah, it's crazy, man. I guess I pace around a lot when I'm in deep thought. That's a pretty bad habit for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have any bad habits. <laughs> so I'm pretty good with everything. Okay. Jesus right here. That's right. <laughs> Man of the Lord. If you guys could tour and open for any band that you get, you get to pick what band it is, like you're opening right before this ginormous band who plays for 50,000 people, what band is it? Great, for sure. Just because uh, of, I think our sound matches theirs, and so our, uh, I think their that fan base would, we would accrue some of them. Yeah. Cradle of Filth. Uh, Behemoth answer. is a favorite of mine. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Tom. I didn't hear you. Uh, Behemoth. Oh, Behemoth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would good. add a uh, Emperor to that. Emperor. Yeah, Emperor is, is pretty good. So the dream tour would be all three of them. You guys are the first on the bill. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd buy a damn ticket for that. I'd, hell yeah, I'd buy a ticket for that. Uh, <laughs> who of any, doesn't necessarily have to be a vocalist, but let's say it's time to do the new, the first single for the next Godless Throne album, but you want a feature on it. But maybe something outside the box, something that mm. people wouldn't normally expect. What? what Who'd you say? Franz? Franz. <laughs> Jay's a closet Attila fan. I love Attila. <laughs> My, <laughs> not, not the closet at all. <laughs> oh, we got Serena coming in. I'll ask her the question. It says admitting. Boom. There she go. What's up? Hello. Can you hear me? We can. How are you? I'm pretty good. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> Long day of uh, jamming? uh i wish i was at work <laughs> well we're glad that you could join us uh I, I only had like five or six questions but i specific left i specifically have one for you though uh, i asked earlier if um i noticed that you always play with your headphones on and uh my old buddy who i used to jam with had to tape his headphones down because they would fly off i was wondering if you ever had like a. Uh, like a backing track or a sample short out and you just had to roll with it or your headphones yes. flew off, but you can't stop and pick them up something. If you had like a cool story like that. Yeah. Um, more than I can count probably. Uh, <laughs> so I think there was one time during, during a show I played where, yeah, the whole system just shut off. And we had to just keep going. We kept playing the song, but it was it was just like we didn't have any of our backing instruments. So it was just guitar, bass, and drums. And it still sounded good, but it was kind of like it missed all the theatrical, symphonic, yeah. everything. Um, but yeah, it's hard to keep the headphones on. I, I try not to headbang so they don't fall off. And it, it kind of restricts your movement, too, because there's only so much length you can get between the headphones and the drums, mm. like where you hook it up to. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to play with headphones on. I like to play without them on if I can, but we use a metronome in yeah. a band with the backing tracks, so I can't really take them off. On that particular show, was it fixed or did you have to finish the show without everything else running. i think that was our final song right, i think well, we finished the I, show with that <laughs> if it's gonna go out that's that's when you want it to go out i guess <laughs> yeah but we it was never a matter of like whether we could or couldn't play it it was more like we just wanted to have the extra stuff there but you know i think that in godless throne we could definitely pull a show off without the backing tracks at this point have you guys if ever we wanted? Have you guys ever? Uh, I'm assuming you practice with all that stuff because it'd just be weird if you didn't. But have you ever tried doing a practice without that stuff? No, no. That's maybe not a good suggestion, it's but I think we could though if we wanted we could to. Do it. I mean, yeah. with the it's just symphonic bands, you know, with all the instruments going on. You know, everything yeah, has to. All the, all the chamber stuff. Things. We just have a lot of stuff going on. If you're off by, you know. A half a click a hair. that stuff doesn't change you know so you just gotta either catch back up real good or or what but 
I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I like using like light clicks and stuff. So we don't like visual cues, things like that. So when we play bigger, you know, when, you know, shows and stuff, I think um, we'll incorporate some of that, totally. you know, just to, you know, just to really keep on it. But yeah, you really have to with this stuff, you know. We have chamber choir going on, which we won't always have live, you know, things like that. So it would be real, real bad if that came in late. <laughs> 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 what, what what kind of movies do you guys watch? Uh, a lot of horror movies. Hell yeah, me too. <laughs> me personally. Oh yeah, horror movies, of course. I mean, you know, all the Marvel stuff nowadays is big, so we like that stuff. But old yeah, Marvel is what we we were, you know, Dio and I certainly grew up with. So I'm always down for a, a, a B horror movie. That's for sure. I can't say that I love them, but I, I always like to watch them. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of B-horror movies. Yeah. What about you, Jay? Uh, I don't watch movies. You don't watch? Who doesn't watch movies? Not even Finding Nemo or I don't have a TV Pirates of the Caribbean? And so, yeah, I don't know. It's not my thing. So our Fair music enough. video, uh, I feel like it got some of its inspiration from this uh, 1980s movie called uh, Suspiria. Oh, it's yeah. basically about yeah. this uh, coven of witches, basically. Yeah. But uh, it's a really good movie. They made, I've, like, a remake of it, too. I've seen Suspiria, but it's been quite a while since I've seen it. Uh, Serena, what about yourself? I, I didn't catch your answer. Um, I can't remember the last movie I watched that was in a theater um, because I just haven't been to a movie theater in a long time. Mm -hmm. Um. I think the last movie I watched was an anime movie, actually. Um, I think it was a silent voice. But that's that's the last one I can remember watching because I've just been so busy. Keeping busy is good. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Fan question number two, which we kind of lightly got on from regarding Serena's answer, but maybe you guys have a different answer. Just fan question number two is, what is Godless Throne's worst live experience? Meaning something that happened that would be negative at a show. Mm. <laughs> maybe we'll try to spin it into a positive. These are fan questions. I did not come up with that one. That wires, I mean, that, that's like my, my nightmare is just hearing that, hearing that static buzz and you just don't know what the hell it's from. And I'm kicking my gear, trying to like get it to stop in the middle of a show. So that that that's like the worst. <clears throat> Fortunately, yeah. it didn't happen much, but trying to figure out what wire is bad. <laughs> um, for me, I broke a string at one show, and it, it it sucked. You know, like when you break a string at a show, it it, it feels horrible. <laughs> but you just gotta like you know stay calm and focused and. Get that other string on there. Hopefully, you brought a you know a backup guitar with you, which I actually did that night. So I had to you know like speed put a fucking string on. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I've got I've got a lot of bad experiences I've had. Um, I don't mean I, that, I but... I'd say the worst one was probably when I played. We played this. It was supposed to be a county fair for San Bernardino County in uh, Cali. And uh, we got invited to play there, and we were supposed to have like a decent stage, and we were supposed to have, we were supposed to be like on a bigger stage, right? They put us off in this little tiny corner on this stage where there was like nobody watching, and we had driven two hours to get there, and it was it was so bad. There was like nobody interested in us. What, and... was, what was the name of that band? <laughs> That was Bettius. That was that was the band I was in before Godless Throne. But yeah, so we basically played this show to almost no crowd except for like three people who were like just lingering around. It it was really bad because my drum set kept sliding around all over the stage and it was <laughs> so hard to play. I mean, I kept hitting my leg with the pedal because it was sliding it to like a 45 degree angle and stuff. It was really bad. I mean, it's just a terrible experience. Terrible experience. Yeah, we, we drove that all that way for like almost no reason too. That, that made it even worse. Dang, hopefully you got to at least enjoy the fair though. 
a little bit. Some, some we, carny, we kind some of wanted food. to just leave. Yeah, I probably would have wanted to just leave too. If I, <laughs> uh, t -t -t I asked this too, but I kind of asked it in a weird way. But uh, what what do you guys jam in your in your spare time? And Jay, you said you're eclectic. You listen to everything, especially reggaeton. But what what is like your what do you guys jam on the side when it's not metal mode? Like, is there any any maybe, like I like some jazz or anything different maybe? Carol G. <laughs> What's that? It's, it's reggaeton. <laughs> <laughs> it's fave. Um, yeah, I like a uh, jazz, uh, lo-fi, um, even classical, even. Um, what else? Yeah, I like like acid jazz. Like, not a lot of vocals, just a lot of instrumental jazz. I'll put that on when I'm just driving and just needing to chill, but mostly it's it's the metal of any kind, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it just gets either heavier and heavier, or, you know, if I want something more mainstream, I'll put something like that on, but I do like the, like, you know, some good, good acid jazz. You know what's so funny about this also, I want to interject, I am so picky about my metal. <laughs> I, it's just so funny. It's like it's like Tom will give me shit about all this other stuff music, but he loves all the metal out there. And I'm like, man, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. It's kind of funny. Yo, what is that? A Circa Survive tattoo on your inner arm? A what? A s Oh, okay, okay. I, though on your right arm, I thought that was a balloon, and it reminded me of some, of an album cover of something. And that I was asking if that's what it was, but it is not. Yeah. <laughs> and I was I was gonna be like, that's not a metal band at all. Uh, <laughs> what's what's uh what's what are some uh, things you guys have lined up in the future that we can tell people about? Like maybe some big shows coming down the road, uh, a, a new music video, anything that you have lined up. So I guess what's next is going to, you know, we have this album, you know, it's been done, you know, this whole thing, this pandemic really hit us hard because we finished recording the album back in like February, 2020. I think we finished mixing it by like April and we had just so many things lined up. We had label interest for its release and, you know, we had shows, you know, obviously, in the works and then everything got shut down so we've been just sitting on this album released three singles off of it two videos i think we're kind of done releasing stuff like that until we drop the whole thing so we're just kind of trying to time that to when we can actually start playing shows which is you know, as you know it's like any day now we've been hearing that for a long time so i don't also, know also certainly in the next two months i think we'll probably put out the full length and then start doing some local stuff and then see what we could do about getting picked up for a bigger tour or something like that. Is Vegas not allowing like local shows right now still? Or are they like really restricting it? They're, no, it's not that. I mean, they're just kind of still really sporadic. I mean, nothing's really come down yet. Um, you know, it's almost, it almost feels like they're like just kind of house shows at this point, but they're coming, right, Dio? I mean, there's really been nothing too major yet. Yeah, nothing too major. Stuff like at dive bars, like when it comes to metal, you know what I mean? Yeah, they're really like, just kind of introducing the other stuff first, you know, like, you know, just like bar band stuff, you know, cover yeah. band stuff. Like, that's what these bars are kind of hosting at the moment. There certainly hasn't been many metal shows. There may have been one or two that kind of trickled in, but, you know, not, not, no, no touring acts or anything like that. Right. Through at this point. And exactly. I don't think anything's coming until... You know, maybe maybe August, and so yeah, we're just gonna reevaluate. But we really want to put out this full length, and so uh, we're probably just gonna release it on our own in the next two months, and then just kind of see where that leads. I mean, we've gotten lots of great responses from the videos we had. That's why we did the videos so people could kind of put some, you know, kind of see us, you know. Instead oh, it, of just, it helps. You know, it helps a lot. Like when when you just yeah. watch a video on YouTube and it has like a just a background cover. That's cool. Right. You, you could still fall in love yeah. with the music, but when you actually see like what the band looks like and stuff, it it, it right. matters. Right. Especially during the pandemic, man. I mean, there's literally nothing else we really could do, you know. So we're like, let's do some music videos. It's <laughs> genius. It came, out, it came out really well. We're real happy with it. And we want to be like visual, as you know, when we're up on stage. You know, we just want we want to you know keep people's interest, and we want to put on a really good live show. 
So that's kind of what we're focused on now. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I'm excited to hear the album. I know that the the couple of times we played you guys in the streams it was fantastic response. Everybody was like, "What the fuck is this? What is this? I want more." And I was like, I was like, yeah, I, I agree. And then uh, I talked to, what is his name from MDPR? Zach? Is his name Zach Devastation? Yeah, Zach from Metal Devastation. Yeah, he he he, he sends me stuff all the time, and that's actually how I found out about you guys. Right. Um, right. Oh, and okay. I, and uh, he's he's always asking me to interview bands, and I was like, you know, I want to interview these guys. Like of all the stuff you sent me, these guys really stuck out. So that's what that's how this kind of like came about. Uh, he'd been asking me to interview some some other bands, and no offense to those bands, but they didn't hit me like the way your guys' music did. Well, we appreciate that. I mean, that's we that's the thing, that. man. Just we want to be in front of as many people as we can, and uh, we think that you know. We have something good to to you know to show, so we want people to see us. Damn right, and you do have something good to show. Uh, the last thing I, I ask of you guys, if, if it's cool, and then I'll let you go, um, is I always have people do an intro for uh, a lot of the reviews I do, and uh, I don't know if you'd want to do that now or maybe another time if you're cool with it. But uh, sometimes at the inter interviews, we just kind of sneak that in. You just go, "Hey, I'm Jay. I'm Tom." I'm you know, from Godless Throne, you're watching local band smoke. But I use them all the time. Uh, sure. So it's just a good way to, like, get your name out there over and over and over again for, like, before I do a hip-hop review. I know it doesn't make sense, but it works. Let's do it. Are we doing it all together, or are we going to do one? <laughs> so should we, like, introduce ourselves as a band name and then... Well, whatever you want to do, it could be absolutely it's bonkers, awesome. doesn't make sense crazy, and I'll still use it. It's Or you can just do it kind of chill. It's up to you. You yeah, can like, do three different saying, ways if you want. We're thrown and you're watching local, local bands work out. Like, we all say at the same time. <laughs> cool. Whenever you're ready. So, so we need the click track for that. For <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll start it off. You're watching local band smoke out. It'll be like that. Well, I, think, I think one of us should probably say we're going to throw and then all of us come in and say you're watching local band smoke out. Okay, let's do it like that. All right, Jay, then we'll let you say it. <laughs> so, so, after I say you're watching, we'll all say the local band, band smoke out. I love how so much thought is being put into okay. this right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's, here's your click track on three. Let's go one, two, three, start. One. Hey, we're God is Throne, and you're watching local, local band, band smoke, smoke out. out. So awesome. So easy, so awesome. You guys are you guys are super cool, man. I appreciate it. If you don't know who this band is, go find out right now at Godless Throne on Facebook. Please look them up on YouTube. Extremely heavy, extremely brutal, and that's what we love here on the show. Guys, you're awesome. Serena, you're awesome. Tom, Dilo, Jay, I appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to do this. It's wicked hot here, and I know it's got to be even hotter in Vegas right now. Crank that AC. And uh, we'll, we'll play some more of your guys' stuff uh, probably tomorrow. If you get a chance, stop by, say what's up. If not, we'll keep playing it anyway. All right. All right thanks you. for having us. You guys are awesome, Appreciate man. It. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers.